Hi, I'm Ted. Please join me in this video to design, build, and test fly this model of the Fokker Spin RC model airplane. Let's get to it. Anthony Fokker is a Dutchman who designed many of the famous fighters for Germany for World War I between 1914 and 1918. We're all pretty much familiar with the Fokker triplane. He was a very innovative, capable aircraft designer with other models during the war. What we're going to do in this video is discuss the trainer that Anthony Fokker actually built, designed and built, to teach himself how to fly in 1910. It was called the Fokker Spin. Uh, spin is a Dutch word apparently for spider. There was a lot of uh, cabling and uh, bracing wires to uh, keep it together. And just just think about 1910 with the engines back then, designing an airplane. He didn't know how to fly to teach him how to fly. So he did it. They um, had built about 25 of these models. Each one was a little bit different than the other ones. And literally learning how they did it. Uh, that was completed, sold to the um, various militaries, and then on to World War One. So this one we will tackle building uh, this prototype of the Fokker Spin airplane. As a reminder, if you'd like to jump ahead anywhere in this video, just go to the timeline and chapters are listed in the timeline. In any event, the Spin is a very easy aircraft to build, but it's got a lot of character, and the character comes from all these struts, bracing, and wires. Uh, spin is apparently the Dutch word for uh, spider, so it looks like a spider's web. I designed this model back in 2014 for an indoor flyer. I've taken these plans right here, there are three sheets that are available to download from the description. They're done in TurboCAD. They're very good plans. And I took them and I went to FedEx office and I enlarged them to about a 20, 28 inch wingspan model. I'll put a link uh, in the description and up here on the video I had on how to enlarge it. They have scanners that do that. The plane is simple enough with straight lines. You can just take measurements off the smaller plan. If it's one inch, you want to make it three times as big, just measure, measure out three inches on a full-size uh, piece of paper. But in any event, what I'm going to do with this one is just build a very simple prototype without any of the uh, struts or rigging on it, just to see if I can put a little bit larger engine that I have in my, um, in, in my building supply, tail services to see if it fly. I'm, I'm even going to use just a regular landing gear on it, not the uh, very elaborate um, braced landing gear they have on the original. If that flies okay, uh, we're happy with that. Then we can build a second one, putting in all the character, the motor and um, engine, and just all the details. Really quite easy to do. I did want to point out that the plane, as I mentioned before, is an incredibly simple airplane. If you look here on the fuselage, the fuselage is literally just a flat plate of um, sticks with, with balls on top to brace it up. The wings are fairly straightforward. You notice there's a lot of camber and a high incidence tilt up. These early airplanes were very underpowered. They wanted to create as much lift as possible with the wing, hence the camber and the high incidence. It created a tremendous amount of drag, but the idea was to fly slow. It's better than not flying at all, um, hence that. We'll see how all that works. So as I build it on the plans, I'll be thinking about how many spars, the size of wood. As we go through the building process step by step, I'll, I'll discuss my thought process on that. These are the plans for the spin. I drew them up back in 2014 on TurboCAD. They're a good set of plans. They're very complete, three sheets. They're available for download for free um, off of Google Drive. The link is in the description. I just want to point out here the center gravity. Mine measured back about two and a half inches from the front point of the wing. You can see I marked it on the fuselage. The plans are correct for the CG. I use scrap balsa uh, for building this entire airplane. It's really not that complicated an airplane. <clears throat> Picked out sheets of 1 8 inch, 1 16th, and so forth. As I mentioned, I'm kind of redesigning the airplane because the original one was an extremely lightweight indoor flyer. I decided to add a fourth spar, and I elected to use hardwood and just make a notch into the rib to um, just make it strength, uh, stronger and a little bit heavier. You'll see how this works out during construction. 1 8 inch balsa for the uh, leading edge, trailing edge of the other spar. 
I just sketched out a spar a little bit thicker with the notches for the two interior spars. You trace that on the 1 16th inch balsa and I uh, produce 14 ribs uh, for my wing. Here are the ribs cut out and we're ready to start building uh, the wing here shortly in the next segment. The first thing is put down the leading and trailing edge 1 8 inch uh, spars. Those are just right on the plan covered with wax paper. And then for the interior spar, I raise that 1 16th of an inch. You can see that scrap wood underneath so it fits into the notch into the ribs and I glue that into place. So here the remaining ribs are glued into place, leading edge, trailing edge, and that uh, spacer underneath the uh, forward hardwood spar, 3 16 inch uh, basswood. And now we do the other uh, wing, the left hand side, and now we have two wing halves. We can join them together at the proper dihedral angle. I picked about two inches. I think I'll add more next time. I use some plywood for that with epoxy just to make sure the wing is strong. I pretty much completed the wing, and here it is right here. And I'm, I'm quite satisfied with the way it came out. <clears throat> it's not elegant. It's not going to win any appearance awards, but this is a prototype just to get it flying. And what I did that's a little bit different than the plans was the plans had one spar back here, and then the leading and trailing edges were de facto spars as well, because you wanted it super lightweight for indoor flying. I added a four spar, and this is a hardwood. I don't know if it's spruce or basswood, but it's 3 16th inch hardwood. It does add a little bit of weight to the overall wing, but boy, this, this adds strength. There's nothing gonna happen with that spar there. And that's all glued in, and I just, made the ribs just a tad bit wider and put notches for these, um, the two spars to go in as well as the leading and trailing edge. Then I used some 1 16th inch plywood on the bottom and on the sides to reinforce the center sections. So I think, I think this is okay. Now, when I cover this, I'm only gonna cover the top surface of the wing. I am not gonna cover the bottom surface. And if I can get it on tight enough, I'm not gonna shrink it up. Again, to save a little bit of weight, I'm going to be using this um, uh, Aerolite covering, or cover light, I think it is. The reason I'm not going to put it on both sides, this is just not strong enough. If I start shrinking this up, it just it's going to start, I'll build it a warp. So I'm just going to put the covering on the top and just maybe shrink it a little bit, but just leave the bottom open. I've done that with other models. I think it'll work out okay. The other thing, just a design feature, when this, when this was designed by Anthony Fokker, the Europeans especially... We're looking to build the stability of their aircraft. There was a belief that if you had swept wings and a fair amount of dihedral, you would have some stability. So um, that is that. There's no ailerons on here. It'll just be a three-channel with throttle, rudder, and elevator. And you can see the amount of dihedral I have here is this amount. I might have added a little bit more if I do this again, but that's the wing right here. So the next step tomorrow is to cover this top only, see how that works out. Then we'll start work on the fuselage. So Annie is keeping an eye on things with the construction. And now it's time to look at the fuselage. The fuselage could be much simpler. It's just a, a straight piece of wood with some uh, sides and, and connectors. There's the wing. You see it's uncovered on the bottom. I'm going to leave it that way to save a little bit of weight, prevent warts from creeping in. You just have to look at the plans where the wing is. The wing is glued underneath that fuselage frame, but make sure you have the proper incidence. I put a spacer block of balsa at the uh, rear attachment point to the wing to make sure it has sufficient positive incidence. This is the dowel tail post that I'm gluing that I'm epoxying into, into place. This will be a strong connection point for the uh, rudder because the rudder has an upper and a lower surface on it. There the rudder, the balsa is being glued to another dowel uh, over the plans. And once that's complete, that'll be the um, rudder that will be attached to that post there. Tail surface I cut out from 1 16th inch balsa. And there's the rudder shown right there. The stabilizer is put into place. I had to cut a little slot that will cover eventually with a covering onto the post. And there's a rudder in place. I was concerned there might not be enough surface air for the rudder, but it turned out to be okay. I'd sure like to have some more though. A very simple landing gear. I just, uh, pliers, bend it on a music wire, glue it into place. We'll put a, a plywood top on top of that to hold everything in. And there's a frame, fuselage frame, wing, and landing gear starting to take shape. 
Go to time as any, take a look at the electronics. Trusty DX6, I have a two cell LiPo battery, uh, AR620 receiver, just a small engine for my parts bin. Should be enough for a five ounce model. There the engine is being glued into place. Uh, just a standard engine installation. A good progress on the Farker spin so far today. This is where we are. Uh, so the wings are covered. They're put in place. I eyeballed the incidents, how much they are compared to the fuselage center lines. It's a pretty positive incidence, but that's the way the real spin had is, is not as much as on the um, plans, a little bit less, but I think it'll be okay for what I'm doing here. The engine mount is in place. 1 16th inch uh, tail surfaces. I have the elevator that will go here and the rudder that will go inside this slot along here. I put some um, just the balsa dowel to, to glue the two pieces to. A very quick landing gear uh, just bent out of music wire and that's what we did today. So I think we're in pretty good shape and um, tomorrow we'll be put on the servos, the receiver. The center gravity will be important. That'll be pretty easy. Wherever I put the, uh, the battery, that'll sort out the uh, center gravity. Then we'll be pretty much done. So here the model is coming along. We have the engine in place. Thinking about the center gravity, there's the tail. I just use scotch tape to put the um, for the for the hinges on that. The rudder obviously before you put on the stab. Notice the control horns have to be far enough far enough out that they don't interfere with the uh, throw of the control surfaces. I put in a fin here. The, the spin doesn't have this vertical fin. I'm concerned there wasn't enough side area, so I'm going to do my test flights with that in place. If it flies well, I may consider taking that out to see if that has an effect on how it flies. Servos are in place. I just picked, again, two ones on my parts bin, uh, small lightweight as possible, have a good length of the control arms. You want maximum throw for a model like this. It flies slow, but you want an awful lot of control throw. And here everything is in place. Note that battery is way too aft for the center of gravity. I'll explain why later in the video. I've completed the Fokker spin here, so let's talk a little bit about it. Um, first of all, it came out heavier than, than I liked. <clears throat> this is 5.5 ounces with the battery. Um, I can see now with 2020 hindsight some things like the, um, the uh, hardwood uh, spar in here other types of balls and sizes and so forth but that's why we build the prototypes we live and learn i just it's a little bit heavier than i wanted so we, we'll just take that as a given and just learn for from it if we build another one from this prototype so um the other thing that came out is a little bit nose heavy normally my planes are tail heavy but i realized this one came out a little bit nose heavy i actually built the nose just a half inch longer than on the plans just to give it a little bit more forward weight but I see this plane has a relatively short tail moment. The tail is shorter than regular airplanes, so there's not enough weight with the tail to balance that off. I think the swept wings with CG location affected that a little bit. So that, that's what happened here. I used uh, building supplies that I had just in, in, in my shop. Uh, this motor is okay. I, I'm pretty sure it will have enough power. Otherwise, my motors are just too big, so we'll go with that. I think we'll be okay on that. The other thing I did that's kind of interesting is this fin right here is not on the original Fokker spin prototype. However, as a general rule, aircraft should have some type of side area. This aircraft, just to make it as simple as possible, just had a, a literally a flat uh, board for the fuselage. Fokker would sit up on it. The engine was placed up front here. I put this in here to, to, just for the test flights. If it flies okay, I intend to remove this at the field, see if it flies without that to have a more real, realistic look to the spin. The, the final two things are the elevator. I've got plenty of elevator, not uh, worried about that. The rudders are top and bottom, these kind of triangular shapes. I wish I had more rudder area. Um, I think I have enough to turn, but it's, it's not. I, I would like to have some more if I could have it. So that's where we are. So um, again, per the plans, the prototype, the swept wing was an attempt by Fokker back in 1910. The belief was you had swept wings, it would increase the lateral stability. And it had a fair amount of incidence, um, you know, the, the angle up for the wing. I built that in. So I think we're all set to fly. The idea is if this thing flies okay, I'll build a second one, obviously make it a little bit lighter. And it can have some fun with the landing gear to make it look more realistic. It's not that hard to do. 
can build a dummy engine and just a more decorative things. Like for example, what I would do on, on the subsequent version, these servos would be put in upside down so they come out here where the control runs underneath the airplane uh, to the control surfaces that just look a little bit better. But let's, let's see if this thing flies first. We'll worry about that later. Just for a little bit of safety, we'll turn it away. The battery is plugged in. Throttle is low. We'll turn this on. And we'll demonstrate the elevator and the rudder once this comes on. So there's the elevator. That's plenty of elevator. And the rudder, it is what it is. That's about all I'm going to get out of it. I've got maximum throws on both control arms. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that and the motor. I think that was plenty of power. So uh, we're done and um, pretty easy build, fun build. I did it in about three days. The next thing we're going to do is wait for a good day at the field and take it for a test flight. So the, the segment you just saw in the center gravity was wrong. I did that last night. I want to keep it in there. I thought about it and I want to show you a correction for the CG. This is just part of designing, thinking about airplanes. So what had happened was off the plans, the center of gravity is correct. And I marked it right here on the fuselage. Just to make it easier to balance it, I put my fingers out at that extended wing tip where it's located. That works with straight wings. For some mathematical reasons, the math majors will have to explain to me it doesn't work with a swept back wing. So it just didn't make any sense to me to have the battery back here to balance it out. What I did this morning after a good night's sleep, I put my fingers on the the center gravity thing on the fuselage itself and lo and behold with a battery up front and my fingers at the center gravity the model balances just fine okay so that was a case of the, the battery was back here it just it just didn't feel right didn't look right figured out by putting the center gravity holding it here everything matches fine with the center gravity so we're done with the model, uh, just waiting for a good day at the RC field. We'll take it for a test flight. Okay. So we're here at the field. Looks like a good day for flying. Um, we'll go ahead and take the Parker spin for a test flight. I've done some more work. I think the battery needs to be a little bit further half of the center of gravity. So let's go ahead and do a pre-flight, get everything in order, and see if we can take it for a test flight. So first takeoff, we'll try from the ground. There was something wrong with the right wheel. Don't know what. So we'll go with a hand launch, and it just flew away fine. Under full control, rudder was fine for turning. Again, it's a little bit heavy, so I've got to keep my speed up. For the next version, I do want to make it lighter. I think the controls are a little bit heavy. Again, I think I'll move the um, uh, CG a little bit further aft. I think it'll make for a better flying model. But again, plenty of control throw. Uh, felt directionally stable. Very happy with it. But again, the one mistake I made was on the landing here. We're going to circle around to land. I pulled the power back just for my normal glide and landing. This does not glide at this weight, and it pretty much dropped in. First of all, thanks to Victor for filming it. Thank you, Victor. So no we had the test flight of the spin, and I'm happy with the test flight, A, because it flew, and I've learned a lot. For whatever reason, I've got to do some more work, figuring out where the center of gravity is. I originally had the battery here way too far forward. I've had it here. I've got to do some homework to figure that out. Um, it's a little bit heavier than I want. As I mentioned, the build process is 5.8 uh, ounces. I know what I need to do to make it smaller. For the next version, I will make it a lot smaller and lighter. But overall, it flew. I was worried about the rudders. would have enough throw. We did have enough throw. The elevators are good. There was enough lateral stability. I'll put a little bit more dihedral in the next one. So it was a good learning experience. Let me go back, collect my thoughts, and we'll make another version a little bit lighter, a little bit more dihedral a little bit prettier and see how that flies.